Hi all, let's have a look at another amazing game from the 1950 USSR Championship. Paul Kares playing Bolzlavski, who we've heard a little bit about. He made a name for himself by coming second in two of the previous USSR Championships and also qualifying, of course, to play David Bronstein to the winner would decide uh, who would play Mikhail Botvinnik. So he's had excellent results towards uh, 1950. Let's see what happens between these two Clash of the Titans. E4 from Paul Kaz. The Sicilian defense. Knight f3, knight c6. Open Sicilian. Knight f6, knight c3, d6. Bishop g5, e6. So this is Rick Terrelza territory. Quite often uh, white aims to castle queenside in this system. Queen d3, bishop e7. White castles queenside, black castles kingside. So an exciting scene is set. Knight b3 is played here. Now quite a committal move. It looks very, very aggressive, a5. One concern, could this pawn actually become weak, a subject of attack in its own right at some point later? For the moment, a4, a3 seems very logical to try and undermine white's queenside. White puts the brakes on with a3. We still have a4. Now knight d4, that b5 square has been weakened a bit. And it's possible that white might consider knight db5 just hitting d6. We have h6, bishop drops back, bishop d7. And now here, in fact, we do have knight db5. So some pressure on d6. Black counters with knight e5 hitting the queen. The queen drops back. And now to quickly resolve the d6 issue, we have bishop takes b5, giving up the light square bishop, but getting in this move queen a5 now. Yeah, if white had tried knight takes b5, then there's knight takes e4 here, hitting the queen, hitting the bishop, also defending d6. So for the moment, the intentions for d6 need to be put on hold. Instead, white has collected the light square bishop. Okay, so queen a5 is played. It's too dangerous here to try and take this pawn because there's things like knight c4. If, if we take the bishop, knight c4 looks very, very dangerous. Following up with things like rooks c8 and knight takes a3 maybe. So for the moment, caution, queen e2, strengthening control of the c4 square, holding the bishop with the queen as well. Rook fc8. And it looks as though rook takes c3 is a real issue to be addressed. And there's actually a really, really clever, ingenious move from Paul Carres in this position. I wonder if you can guess why it's play to counter this threat in an elegant, efficient manner. I think this does start to show the strength of his play with white. This kind of move. If I give you five seconds here, what would you play with white? You might want to pause the video and study the position. So five seconds starting from now. Okay, rook d4. It's prepared to meet rook takes c3 here. It wasn't played now. With, can you see? Rook takes a4. And that will drive the queen back. So this position and this position is not so dangerous even if the queen comes to take on a3 this is okay for white it's quite good for white so rook d4 very very good move in the circumstance where black seems to be developing uh, some dangerous queenside pressure we have queen b6 stepping away from that possibility but losing a pawn rook takes a4 Rook takes a4, bishop takes a4, is, pardon me, let's go slowly here. Knight takes a4 is played, not bishop takes a4. Knight takes a4 hits the queen. On bishop takes a4, there's an important move again, because it weakens c4. Knight c4 could be uh, a dangerous move. Looking at b2, and 
this could undermine c3 quite usefully for example bishop b3 might have knight takes a3 undermining c3 so Paulkaz is treading very very carefully here okay he's playing knight takes a4 in this position it's important to kick that queen as well okay now for the moment um e4 this, this is a constant concern knight takes e4 the e4 pawn is strengthened here with f3 we have knight g6 hitting the bishop the bishop goes back to e1 hitting the queen yet again with tempo queen c7 and the bishop comes to shield help shield c2 here now e5 we have a Bozlaski hole in fact for the moment that d5 has been weakened it became known as Bozlaski hole here is not particularly dynamic for black but black is able to play for d5 quite swiftly afterwards so rook d1 and if white gets his way then he'll get a grip on d5 here with knight b6 to d5 maybe at some point but you've got to factor in knight f4 in fact knight f4 is played immediately hitting the queen and now black does get in this d5 e takes provides potential for frontal pressure on the e5 pawn knight four takes and the queen drops back here the threat here is queen takes e5 not bishop takes because then queen takes c2 checkmate but uh black now takes on c3 and again it's it's too dangerous to take with the knight things like bishop takes a3 would seem quite promising for black undermining c3 the queen is used to take on c3 here queen b8 it seems the black queen has moved quite a lot in response to white's possibilities queen b3 and now there's a possibility on the cards of bishop c4 putting pressure on f7 we have e4 but queen h2 takes h2 needs to be taken seriously as well here we see g3 stopping that possibility and restricting the queen's movements even to e5 if f4 is played and in fact here after queen c2 forget grabbing this pawn because that would just help activate black surely with knight takes e4 and bishop g5 check we see f4 trying to restrict black's play on this side trying to keep things frozen for a moment h5 we have rook d4 again with ideas for example rook c4 to get uh, the rooks off and it also of course supports potentially bishop c4 but rook c4 immediately is another a nuisance queen a5 now bishop c4 yeah white's gained control of that c4 square queen e1 can be answered with rook d1 and we're looking at f7 here king just sidesteps in this position now that this might indeed be the best move engine suggests this might be a good move and on say b5 there's other possibilities for white like queen e6 and it's, it gets interesting but um instead king b1 is played here bishop c5 rook drops back and black tries to generate some counterplay there with bishop f2 letting this go again because it will be weakening e2 and e3 e2 is interesting for black here but white is not interested in taking that pawn and giving black this counterplay with this potentially dangerous pass pawn white clamps down on it with knight c3 creating a blockade on e2 is of more immediate concern white's already a pawn up he doesn't need to gamble or enter any more complications for the moment if he can just freeze this dangerous past pawn here that's his top priority so e3 knight e2 nice blockade rook d8 trying to unblockade or get into these dark squares but white obliges with rook takes d8 and now blocking that d file from entrance with bishop d3 check shutting the door 20 queen d2 possibility if that was a concern in any case king g8 and now winning another pawn queen takes b7 so white's potentially got two major or three major connected past pawns g6 so two pawns up here and now bishop c4 having the cake and eat it eating it blockading on e2 and hitting f7 now it's pretty much over this position there's not too much counterplay for black queen d7 emitting kind of resignation really queen's coming off here is only in white's favor a4 
that pawn's got a future. And with king f8, I think on adjudication on something black resigned with his move. When you see black resigning with their move, in those days there was adjudications and it's likely that black uh, just gave, gave up when inspecting the position more deeply. So this is at move 42. But yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty hopeless. There's not too many chances to, to draw this. I know it's opposite color bishops, but these are huge past pawns over here. Did we get a glimmer of Paul Kerr's, his style, his versatility? I think we did in terms of its opening versatility. In one game, he's playing the English opening, and in this game, he's playing e4. Mind you, in those days, there wasn't such harsh theoretical preparation available to players. So maybe it was a case you could play different openings with white. And as long as you've got a reasonable position, you would be okay. From the point of view of managing Black's counterplay, it seems, you know, that C file pressure, this is the classic Sicilian defense counterplay. The move Rook D4 did question Black's particularly unique setup that the A4 pawn was vulnerable and was a source of response to any potential threats. It seems later, you know, winning that pawn, the concern for Black, you know, to try and get counterplay, it was squished on this diagonal, and this past pawn was held under lock and key, as Nimzovich would say, uh, before White indulged in getting another pawn, and then it just became helpless, totally hopeless and helpless for Black. So a great game for managing counterplay against one of the most feared players in that period. Bolzlewski, who had come second in two prior USSR championships, has been outplayed in this game. So. This is a nice example again of Paul Kaz, how dangerous he is uh, in this tournament. Okay, comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.